What up guys, Soccer Doc here. My name is Pat Pereira. I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing with you what are some of the best ways that you can prevent injury in soccer, football? What are some of the best strategies you can take? So these are some of my favorite tips and I wrote them down for us. We'll go through one by one. All right. So number one, guys, when we're looking at how can we prevent injury, one of the first things we need to look at is overuse. You want to avoid overuse injuries. If you're a soccer player, typically in the United States, I'm not too sure how the schedule is in Europe or South America, but typically in the United States, soccer season is the fall season. And now many athletes to get the competitive edge, they're also playing in the winter, in the spring, and in the summer. Now, most sports specialists out there will recommend you skip at least one season of soccer. If you're playing fall, winter, spring, and summer, if your child is, their risk of injury goes much higher. Now you're talking about developing overuse injuries, such as Achilles tendonitis, patellar tendonitis, any kind of tendonitis in the body can come from overuse and just increasing your risk for fatigue, muscle fatigue. If you have muscle fatigue and hip fatigue in the muscles of your hip and your quads during the game, your athlete or you, you won't have as much stability. Your knee will buckle more. Your risk of tearing something will go higher. So you need to take adequate rest. At least skip at least one season a year to give your body the rest. Whether you want to take off the winter time, the spring or the summertime, take one season off a year to rest. Now, number two, we want to look at if you've been resting, let's say you did take the summer off. Let's say you took more than three weeks of rest or you took more than a month of rest. When you get back to playing soccer, when you get back to playing football, you need to train yourself properly before you do full contact soccer. You want to do strength training. You want to do balance training. You want to do agility training, especially agility training before you get back to full contact soccer. Now, what could happen, this is just happened to me just now, if you took more than a month of rest and you get back to 100% full-on soccer, your risk of injury is much higher because your tendons aren't, and your muscles and tendons aren't used to that kind of load. Now, if they aren't used to that kind of load and they've been resting, they've been shortened, now all of a sudden you apply this extreme load to them, your risk of injury goes much higher, they're not ready to take on that load. Now, so make sure you train in those things. Number three is you want to stay well hydrated. Throughout the year, you want to stay well hydrated. Now, the American Academy of Sports Science recommends that soccer players should drink between six to eight glasses of water a day. So six to eight, eight ounce glasses of water a day to stay well hydrated. So that means you should be drinking at least six to eight glasses a day. Athletes who are dehydrated or even minimally hydrated have increased risk of muscle cramps, muscle soreness, and muscle injuries throughout games. A good sign that I like to say is that once you start feeling thirsty, that means you're already way too dehydrated. All right, you want to make sure you're well hydrated throughout a match so they perform at your optimal self and your muscles are at optimal capacity to perform. Now, tip number four to avoiding soccer injuries, how can you prevent soccer injuries would be avoid playing in excess heat or excess cold. Playing in temperatures that are too cold or too warm can increase your risk of injuries. If you are playing in a colder temperature, make sure you show up 15 to 20 minutes at least before a game and have 15 to 20 minutes of warm-up activity where you're doing some light jogs, some light sprints, some ball touches, some cutting, some, some kind of action to get your muscles ready to active stretching to get your muscles ready for the actual game. If you're playing in weather that's too warm, make sure you may not need as much time to warm up, but you need to take time to stretch, to dynamic stretch, actively stretch, and stay well hydrated before a game. Number one thing is you have to listen to your body and take that time to rest. Now, number five would be avoid playing in poor field conditions. We know from playing here in the United States, there's a lot of grass fields that aren't in the best shape. So if you can, avoid playing in fields that are a little too bumpy and don't have that nice flat surface. There's a lot of turf fields too that are a little too hard and that's putting more impact on your knee. So if you can, play on fields that are a little safer, that are better padded and are a little more flat. If you're training on your own, avoid training in a field that's not flat, that has a lot of bumps and holes in it. Because what can happen is as you're running, as you're jogging, your foot can play on the hole. And as you're exploding, you're going to twist out and it can cause ankle injuries, any kind of injuries throughout your body. All right. So now let's go into the next tip. Number six is wear well-fitting shoes. When I say well-fitting shoes is if you want to look at your foot. Do you have a wider foot? Or do you have more of a narrow foot? If you have a wider foot, you want to get a shoe that will give you more space to run and to be free. And I have a wider foot. I found that these lottos have been good to me lately. 
a lot of times you will, especially for soccer and football athletes, we'll see these Nike cleats that are a little too narrow for us or Adidas, whatever it may be. And now Nike and Adidas are both doing a good job of making wider shoes, but you have to use the shoe that fits your foot well. Don't try to squeeze yourself into a shoe just because it looks nice and it looks flashy and makes you think that it's so lightweight, it's gonna make you run faster. Don't do that, don't get into that mistake. Pick the shoe that fits you right. That's why I recommend you go to the store, you try on shoes and cleats and you buy the one that fits you the best. Another tip, and fits you the best, meaning you don't feel any pressure on the sides of your foot, on your toe or your heels, and also they're not too loose. You don't want to get a shoe that's a size larger than you or a size lower. You want it just to be your size. All right, the next tip I would say for soccer cleats, use a shoe that has molded cleats on them, molded spikes. You don't want to use spikes that are screw-ons, all right? Research has shown that molded cleats perform better when it comes to risk assessment of injuries, all right? So now the next tip I'll give to you guys, let me turn over here, it would be listen to your body. If you start feeling any soreness throughout your body at any point, listen to it. Don't keep pushing your body into extreme limits. Listen to it. Give yourself time to rest, to address any injuries, to heal, to rehab, to do physical therapy, to stretch. Don't play on an injured limb. Don't force your child to play on an injured limb. Why? Because if you're playing through pain, the pain is your body giving you a signal, a sign that, hey, something needs to be addressed. Something is wrong. Rest, heal, get the medical advice you need. Don't push past the pain because then you're, you're, not, you're just masking the injury. You may create further problems down the road and you're also delaying the time of healing most of the time. Now, if you have any questions, please comment below. Please hit the subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. This is how you can prevent soccer injuries and football injuries, what steps you can take for you or for your athlete. All right. All the best, Soccer Doc. Thanks for following.